Ladies and gentlemen, the world's best street fighters are getting creamed in Milwaukee. Let me explain. You see, we just recently, over the past weekend, had Cream City Convergence, uh, also known as C3, take place in the Cream City itself, Milwaukee. Yes, uh, this this name, while it might allude to something more devious in your uh, own dirty little mind, um, it does have, apparently, some historical significance to the city of Milwaukee. And uh, don't worry, the organizers are well aware of the implications of of such a name and uh, the, the social media teams uh, and lead up to this event have been doing an excellent job memeing about the event. But this event is significant because it is the second stop in the Capcom Pro Tour for 2024. So the first event that we had was, of course, Evo, where Punk the God won his first Evo championship and the first Evo in a mainland Street Fighter event for the US of A and uh, thus became the first person to qualify for Capcom Cup. Because remember, there are eight offline premier events where the first place champion will qualify into the Capcom Cup over the season. And then in between that, there are the World Warriors for each region where players will fight over the course of the season to earn points in the region and the top ranked players from those regions will then qualify into the Capcom Cup. So either you become the best in your region through consistency and qualify that way, uh, which means if you're from a very stacked region like Japan or the U.S. East Coast, there's only two spots available for all the players in that region or you win one of these eight offline events to get into the Capcom Cup. So it's very cutthroat, especially for players from really stacked regions to get into Capcom Cup. So this event is extremely important, which drew the attention from top players like Dual Kevin, who is, uh, you know, he's from the Midwest, so he's going to be a little bit of a Midwest hero in this event um, from Indiana competing here in Wisconsin, who just came off a really excellent run at the Esports World Cup. Uh, Mena RD, of course, a two-time Capcom Cup champion. He's in the very stacked East Coast region, so of course he'd like to qualify early rather than later. And even Daigo the Beast Umehara down in Wisconsin and uh, competing in this tournament. And I never for the life of me would have ever had expected Daigo to be in Milwaukee because you see... If you used to watch my content back in the day, back in the Street Fighter V Balrog days, you know, back when uh, I was bright-eyed, young, uh, and had two testicles, uh, this stream back then was actually in Milwaukee, very near the venue where uh, C3 was taking place. So the fact that players from all over the world, uh, even though there wasn't that many international events, Daigo came solo to this one from Japan, uh, but there were players from Europe as well, um, from China, and uh, Daigo from Japan. All in Milwaukee to play Street Fighter. I never would have believed that back in the Street Fighter V Balrog days. So it's really interesting to have everybody in my old backyard uh, for this event. But leading into the event itself, uh, Daigo, you know, he's getting creamed as well. Because Kangaroo here goes up against Daigo uh, in top 96. Kangaroo actually put me into losers right before this match. If I was able to actually uh, beat Kangaroo, I would have been playing Daigo in this position. But here we have both players on set point. Daigo goes for the command grab. You see here, Daigo's being a little cheeky. He mixed in this command grab a lot during this set. The basic mix-up is if you parry the fireball game from Akuma, which is very powerful, the fireballs are extremely fast and it's very hard to react in time to parry it. If you attempt to uh, mindlessly parry each fireball, then when you see any kind of startup animation, you react with parry, the command grab will go forward and punish you with a punish counter grab and with the amount of health that kangaroo has left right here this command grab definitely would have killed him but kangaroo responds in kind with stand fierce buffered into the od hashigeki into the full ca right here uh to make the the life lead and his advantage jago low on dry meter kangaroo goes for the driver's cancel daigo back dashes from the throw attempt in the corner few options remaining kangaroo he ends up blocking out the sequence Puts himself into burnout with the OD Fireball. Wa finds the counter hit overhead. And that doesn't even combo. But he gets the counter hit. And puts Daigo into losers in top 96 in Milwaukee. Kangaroo, um, if you're not familiar with him, he's a very strong player out of Minnesota. So also a Midwest representative uh, defending the home turf from Daigo from Japan. So Daigo in losers early in this event. Uh, but another big match coming up here. Ramsey versus Ending Walker, another Midwest favorite here. Ramsey, if you remember him for his Zangi play, maybe if you watch Frosty Fostings, he had an amazing run in Frosty Fostings 2023. I believe he got third or fourth place at that event, rocking Zangief back before the buffs when Zangief was considered by many to be potentially the worst character in the game. Uh, so he always has the, the home crowd Midwest power-up advantage going up against Ending Walker, 
who is fairly fresh off his third place finish at Evo, the previous premiere. So Andy Walker, the heavy favorite here, but he's actually down to set point versus Ramsey's E Honda. I don't think Ramsey really likes the Zangief matchup. I was told that he practiced actually a little bit of the Zangief versus Ed with Shine and got kind of washed. So I think his confidence was kind of shot in the Zangief versus Ed matchup. So it goes with Honda, which is interesting because Andy Walker originally played E Honda when Street Fighter 6 first released. So he's familiar with the character, but Ramsey brings a different flair to it. And here we have him at set point with Ending Walker here in the corner. Ending Walker mistakenly believes his hands is punishable. This is the enhanced light hands, which is only negative four on block. And against Ed, Ed's jabs that are four frames are extremely short range and would not be able to reach in time. Ending Walker goes for crouching light kick, a five frame light to punish this into the heavy blitz with a knockdown. So he definitely had kind of a, a decision making error here because that would punish the medium or heavy hands, but would not punish the light hands, which means he's very punishable here. So Ramsey goes ahead and gets a punish counter. And combos into the level three to close out the set is what I would have said. But if you notice, the clip has a, a lot more time to go. For some reason, Ramsey brain farts in the heat of the moment when all he had to do is cancel into a basic hands into level three combo to close out the set 2 0 over Ending Walker in a big upset. But now he's in burnout. Ending Walker working on a comeback, drive rush behind the fireball to gain more screen control. Deals with the butt splash back to neutral here. Any Walker just needs to get some plus frames here, get the advantage going. Back dash is to beta throw. Ramsey doesn't bite. Takes this throw. Drive rush to DI. Ramsey wasn't ready to respond with the super. And there we go. Just a basic combo into the level three. And ending Walker ties up the game. And there you can see Ramsey. You can see Ramsey face in his hands right there. He knows. He knows that that was a huge, huge choke from him. He had the set practically in his hands, just had to complete a basic combo. But I think this was uh, kind of that tournament nerves, you know, you're alternating between different characters and what wasn't quite prepared for a basic punish like this. And uh, I don't even have the next clip, but Ending Walker, of course, the classic happens. He runs it back and actually ends up taking it 2-1 over Ramsey instead of being put into losers in top 96, like what should have probably had happened here. But moving on to the bracket, Andy Walker uh, proceeds to have another tough match versus another Midwest representative, Joey. Joey playing Manon here in the top 24. This match is actually to get into the top eight on winner's side. Joey had an amazing run getting to this point. He actually put Kaba from the Dominican Republic with his guile into losers and Lex. Lex from the UK, originally from New York, JB's brother, uh, sponsored by Cloud9, who got third place at Evo Japan with his guile and is one of the best guile players on the planet. He beat both these guiles with Manon. So many people uh, assume Manon is just helpless in all scenarios and uh, assume that characters like Guile always smoke Manon, even though we've seen um, Joey proving it in this tournament that uh, she can definitely handle Guile. And uh, Knuckle Doo has also lost to Idom's Manon in a few tournaments as well. So Joey here uh, from, I believe also Minnesota like Kangaroo, is going up against Andy Walker, is on set point, gets the drive reversal to get the knockdown, to keep pressure uh, pushing Andy Walker towards the corner, finds the buffer into the drive rush cancel. One command grab on deck there, level four there for Joey. Meaty DI, Andy Walker was not ready, which gives Joey the fifth medal here, and one command grab will still the deal. Andy Walker knows it, goes for the reversal, Joey baits it out. It was guess for game, one way or the other, and Joey! You know, Ramsey got close. <laughs> he couldn't quite close it out. But Joey from the Midwest puts the third place finisher, uh, the bronze medalist from Evo, into the loser's bracket. Once again, Midwest defending from the invaders here in Cream City. Uh, but up next, we have a classic in the high level and a weekly scene. Knuckle Dew going up against Dual Kevin. Uh, both these players back from the Esports World Cup where they had uh, their, their own decent showings competing for that big prize pool in Saudi Arabia. But here, Knuckle Doo, uh, he beat Dual Kevin, or uh, Dual Kevin rather, beat Knuckle Doo's Guile. Got Knuckle Doo to switch to the DJ. We got one throw. We got two throw. We got three throw. Do we get four? We get four throw. Now your health is too low. Meaty DI from Dual Kevin. Knuckle Doo uh, had a twitch reaction, tried to respond with his own DI. You saw right there, but his health is too low to afford to armor through the DI. Once your health gets too low beyond a certain point, you cannot counter DI. You need to use parry to survive. The uh, incoming unblockable. Knuckle doing the heat of the moment kind of flubs. He should have tried to go for a reversal. 
uh, with either a super or OD up kicks or go for perfect parry. But the pressure was too strong, and Duel Kevin puts Knuckle Dew into the loser's bracket and moves on into top eight winner's side. And here we have an interesting match coming up. Mena RD versus Just a Kid. And look at what character Mena RD is rocking. I had covered Mena RD uh, practicing with his Zangief on this channel before. He had gone to Japan prior to Esports World Cup to train there and used a lot of Zangief while in Japan. However, at Esports World Cup, you know, he had uh, a surprising finish where he went 0-2 in groups, losing to Zhen and then Duel Kevin, where he played primarily his Luke, Blanca, and Akuma in those sets, but no Zangief. So I was wondering if, if he really was going to commit to the character and bring the character out in high-stakes situations. And here we see this the practice come to fruition here. Uh, he's going up against Just a Kid, uh, hometown hero right here. Just a Kid is actually from Milwaukee. In fact, I have some, some little league trophies here. Let me go ahead and grab that. Oh, quick. Here we go. Trip down memory lane. Uh, from the local in Milwaukee where I found Just a Kid in the dumpster. First place at uh, Gaming Lounge, Tier 1, 2016, back in Street Fighter Five days, where Just a Kid was a wee six foot three lad back in the day. And, uh, you know, even though he's grown so much, he's still just my son. He actually was one of the players who beat uh, Mena RD at CEO 2024. Uh, Mena RD was double jeopardy by jury, just a kid and nephew who beat and eliminated Mena RD at that tournament. So he prepared Zangief as part of his counterpick strategy for jury. That's fine. And here we see the jump in denied, jump in denied. Mena RD still on set point though, in the corner. Sweep blocked. One more interaction is really all it takes for just a kid, but and then I already finds the Lycake Dry Rush, Headbutt Reset, SPD Reset, Dry Rush, Crouching Medium Kick, Meaty. And you can see how dangerous Zangief is, right? Like, just a kid, it looked like he had perfect control in this situation, but Mena already found one opening, and there was two resets back to back, and where did his health go, man? It's just gone in the flash of an eye, and that's part of what makes Zangief so dangerous in this iteration of Street Fighter VI. So you can see the Zangief pick doing work, helping him in a matchup that he actually struggled with previously just a few tournaments ago. And uh, one of the other matches to qualify for top eight here is Knuckle Dew versus Kaba, the Galmir. This actually was a, uh, not a Galmir in the first match. Knuckle Dew went Kami for the first game against Kaba's Guile. And after uh, being defeated, switched back to the Guile. And here we have set point here for Kaba. Dew trying to get some offense started. Low drive meter situation for both of them. Kaba defending in the corner. Finds the counter hit medium conversion. Basic dry rush overhead approach. Gets the conversion. And the quick stand up and turn around there from Kaba. After he gets the perfect over knuckle do to secure the set 2-0 to get into the loser side top 8. Uh, you didn't really catch it on camera. But the tweets confirm from, from knuckle do that there were words exchanged. There was a pop off to be had. You see? Do dang rights. Kaba definitely popped off and said he's the number one Guile. Didn't you know beating me one game with Guile erases all the tournaments I've destroyed him in with Guile and Cami. If he truly believes it, let's run a first to seven for ten thousand dollars. We can do it in his home of uh, DR. What's up? And he tags Kaba and Mena RD, <laughs> getting Mena RD in there uh, for some reason as well. Uh, so do dang. Um, I saw him after this match. He was definitely not happy with the results. And you can see here, he's calling out Kappa for the title of best guile while Higuchi is just chilling at home. Like, hey, what about me, guys? So we'll have to see if this comes to fruition or not. And while we don't have a confirmation about the match being accepted or not by Kava, we did have this post from Mena RD saying, the good days are long gone. And there we have Mena, Kaba, and Knuckle Dew posing together after they actually won a team tournament in Japan just a few months ago. So it shows how... Uh, Things can change quickly in the world of Street Fighter. And moving on to the next top eight qualifying match, we have Rob TV chiming in. Idom doesn't take this stuff serious, bro. Crying emoji, crying emoji, laughing emoji. So what is Idom doing? Tries to DI through the OD fireball. Samurai reacts with his own DI in return. Gets the knockdown with a combo into the sweep. Oki denied. Immediate reversal DI after the tech throw. And then immediate DI again to punish the fireball. 
Uh, so Idom just swinging for the fences here, and then even at the end of the clip right there goes for the drive rush and command grab. But I don't think I, I understand, man. Akuba's fireball game it's too good. If you try to sit there and block it out or try to perfect parry it, he's just he's just gonna chuck more fireballs at you, and you can't block and jump the next fireball. It's very difficult to get around the zoning game. So sometimes you got to take a risk like that. But that's not the only risk you take. You see, Idom he was down. Uh, a game and then brought it all the way to final game, final round up against Samurai. Here we have him, final game. Double dash command grab builds the fourth medal. Dash in. Uh, drive reversal there from Samurai to, to deny the driver's cancel pressure. A little high in that dive kick. He does jab and did take their command grab. Level five command grab available. Baits out the drive reversal. And that's a punish counter level five command grab on Akuma. That is more than enough damage to take this set. Idom getting a little nutty with it to make his uh, way into the top eight losers side. Uh, but we have more losers qualifications coming up. We have the hometown hero now against the sole Japanese representative, the GOAT, the beast, Daigo Umahara up here against Jack. And Jack here is on set point, but Daigo has a healthy life lead. Doesn't believe in the drive rush cancel to punish the drive rush from Jack. So Jack lands a jump. It's a lot of jump-ins were unanswered from Daigo in this set, actually. Really good jump-ins from Jack overall. But he knows he needs one good touch to, to close the deal out. And he controls the space here with a stand heavy punch, which builds just enough drive meter. If you pay attention to the way this conversion goes, he barely built the drive meter to get to that extra extra bit of bar above three bars here to allow for two drive rush cancels in the combo and he just perfectly places this after the fireball daigo ends up walking into that stand fierce right there which gives jack the full conversion with the two stores there with the record conversions and that ca is more than enough and just a kid eliminates daigo the beast from cream city in milwaukee defending his hometown and daigo the sole japanese player and representative from japan has been eliminated before top eight by two Midwest players. And uh, you know what? I understand, Daigo. I get it. I know what it's like to be washed in Milwaukee. So I had to take a picture with my goat here. Washed in Milwaukee with the goat, Daigo, the beast, Umehara, uh, because we both did not get the job done. Um, I got washed way harder, to be quite honest. Uh, but this picture... I did not expect it to, to be quite the buzz that it was, but look at Daigo's pose right here. He is big, chilling, backpack on front, toes pigeon-toed in. Uh, this man is just, is just big, chilling. I had to get the pick while I could, and then as soon as I took this picture, he stormed off and ran away, but <laughs> this picture went semi-viral on Twitter and all over Japan, where people were just amazed at the aura of Daigo the Beast, and this was the last I saw of him. In Milwaukee, but shout out to you, Daigo. Thanks for coming down to uh, Cream City and uh, participating in some Street Fighter with the Midwest. But that sets the stage here for our top eight. Uh, we have Joey versus Dual Kevin, Mena RD versus Nephew, Andy Walker versus Kaba, and Jack versus Idom. And uh, we had to look at Mena RD versus Nephew here. This was a crazy set. Once again, Nephew was one of the players who, with Jury, defeated Mena RD at CEO along with Jessica Kidd. So he goes back to the Zangief to get his revenge here. And here we have final game, final round, Mena RD in burnout in the corner with zero super meter versus level two jury. Practically defenseless against this. But what I'm surprised here is Nephew goes for the DI a little early. He doesn't go for any high-low shenanigans to try to um, get more damage before going for the guaranteed stun because essentially if you set this up right, there's nothing that Mena RD can do to defend it's the incoming DI with zero super meter available in burnout as Zangief, if done properly to not be armored through with a stand fierce. But Nephew may be a little bit nervous about messing up the pressure and letting uh, Mena RD get out of the corner. Goes for the guaranteed stun early. And here he gets the store, sets up the jump and combo. Basic conversion from, from Nephew. Not a lot of meter to spend there. Drive rush canceled is denied by the drive, uh, uh, drive reversal. But... The spaghetti here, you can see, I, I believe that uh, Mena RD was also confused about what side he was on. He goes for the reset after the, after the drive rush cancel into the headbutt here. And then after this jump in, I believe he himself also thought this was going to cross up. Ends up just landing in front. Uh, Nephew probably was going for a cross cut of sorts. And then the angle got all strange and he just gets counter hit out of a button, probably messing up a DP. And then Mena RD goes for uh, the, the fierce there, which I think might have been a messed up headbutt input. Uh, it's hard for me to really tell from that situation. But now 
Uh, and Nephew has a slight life lead, but is low in the drive meter situation. And that's basically one SPD away. But Mena RD finds the jump over the OD fireball, gets the full drive rush cancel combo, and puts Nephew into the loser's side and goes into the winner's finals instead. So the Zangief pick, it's working out. I mean, these are two players that uh, specifically beat him previously to him adding Zangief to his arsenal. So the Zangief pick is doing wonders here for Mena RD. As we moved on, uh, Duel Kevin won his set over Joey. Ending Walker ended up eliminating Kaba 3-0. Jack uh, falls to Idom. Uh, Nephew also is eliminated by Ending Walker. Now we have Joey versus Idom in Losers Quarters. So first of all, we have a Zangief in Winners Finals at Cream City. And then we also have two Manons, a Manon Mirror in Top 8 as well. Are the Grapplers taking over? They're doing some work. And, uh, you know, many people consider Idom to be the Manon from NA. But Joey, he had an amazing run this weekend. Shows that he is not a force to be uh, underestimated. Here he is on set point up, up against Idom in the corner. Finds the Stand Feed Me Kick driver's cancel into the knockdown. Gets the plus frames from the buffed Stand Fierce. That does give plus one now. Uh, commits to the jab driver's cancel. Which allows him to convert into the combo into the level three. And Idom with a pixel to his name. Tries to walk out of the pressure. Gets clipped low with the crouching light kick. And Joey eliminates Idom in the Manon Mirror. Three, two, one. So Midwest doing it big, defending from uh, the East Coast here. So I would just like to say shout out to Joey for uh, for all these big wins. And uh, the Midwest really doing work. You know, the most disrespected region, first of all, you know, Dual Kevin and Joey are two frequent competitors in my World Warrior region in the Midwest. And so is Just a Kid. So obviously, this, re this event will feature more Midwest players. That's a given. Um, but they were doing their thing from defending against uh, the people, the players from Japan, players from Europe as well, players from East Coast. So shout outs to Midwest, the most disrespected region in the NA, who uh, seems to be doing pretty consistent out here. Gotta say, gotta say. Anyways, tangent aside, we are now going into the winner's finals. And this is an interesting one because this is a run back as well for Mena RD. You know, Mena RD, ever since his EVO Japan performance and the season two balance patch, hasn't really quite had the same results he had prior, where he was, by many people's accounts and mine as well, the best Street Fighter VI Season 1 player, the most consistent player in Street Fighter VI Season 1. Even though he only got top 16 at Capcom Cup, he was also the Street Fighter League um, Street Fighter League World Champion winner, and he also won EVO Japan after that. So definitely the most consistent player in Street Fighter VI Season 1. And since then, he's been kind of trying to find his footing. Both Luke and Blanca, his two main characters, were nerfed, and he was trying to figure out exactly what he would bring to the table. Zangief here got him over Just a Kid and Nephew, two players who beat him at CEO. Now, Duel Kevin is the player who eliminated him from the Esports World Cup in group stages with his Rashid versus Mena RD's Blanca. So what does he bring to the table for this match in Winners Finals? It's the Zangief, and this was a speed run. You can see here Mena RD at set point over Duel Kevin, working on a 3-0. Chipping away at the drive meter here, playing the neutral game. Perfect parry through the uh, the fireball there. Dual Kevin finds the counter hit knockdown, but Dry Reversal pushes Dual Kevin away. He reads the fireball, reacts to the DI through the regular uh, whirlwind shot there from Dual Kevin. Baits out the reversal. Basic combo to take the set. 3-0 Mena RD over Dual Kevin in winner's finals. And the Zangi for Mena RD seems un unstoppable as he marches on into the grand finals winner's side. On the loser side of things, though, we have a run back. Joey, who put uh, Ending Walker into losers, uh, you know, he he's looking to do it again, but Ending Walker definitely wants his revenge. Joey finds the counter hit poke from the fake string from Ending Walker, but the air to air and the jump back sets up the read with the air flicker to pull Joey out of the air. And a, a big flub on this level two conversion. Any Walker kind of freestyling, not sure what to do with the combo, but he reads the command grab here with the wake up ODDP and goes for it again on the low drive meter situation here. I mean, the way Eddie Walker is viewing the situation here, it's like if he blocks this pressure here coming from Joey in the plus frames, he's got to go into burnout and probably lose the game with zero super meter. So might as well swing for the fences here and win right now if uh, Joey tries to assert any more pressure. So he goes for the DP again. 3-1 Ending Walker over Joey to get his revenge for Joey putting him to losers. But uh, big shout-out to Joey. He had a really amazing run, beating lots of top-level players with Manon of all characters, a char uh, character that many people consider to be not good, even in this version of the game. She was definitely, I think, worse 
in the previous season. I think she's decent myself in uh, this version of the patch. Um, but I think uh, for a long time, Joey hasn't quite had the same respect put on his name. He was a top-level Mika from North America in Street Fighter V as well, with many big wins over some of your favorite players internationally. Daigo, Fudo, Punko. Like, he has a lot of big names under his belts in uh, big tournaments like EVO. Uh, so I think he's getting a little bit more shine and visibility for how strong he really is. So shout out to Joey for a great performance at Cream City. Uh, but that said, Andy Walker is now going to losers finals up against Duel Kevin to see who's going to make it into the grand finals to go up against Mena RD. And here we have Andy Walker up a game, one round away from potentially making this 2-0, but Duel Kevin's fighting, fighting hard. He has the corner control, needs one more interaction. The drive reversal whiffs, and then the perfect pairing return. Duel Kevin doesn't fall with a, with a cross-up button here, which would have punished his wake-up drive reversal. He falls with a jump heavy kick, but the drive reversal moves Ending Walker out of the corner. And then the perfect parry on the medium to medium gets the, the punish counter conversion. Duel Kevin is now in burnout in the corner. Sudden turn of momentum here. Take throw there for Ending Walker. Meaty flicker pressure, you can't reverse a lot of that. Then surprise drive rush DI, and here we have Ending Walker converting this combo into the level three to tie up the sets or to take the set to 2-0 to establish a dominant lead. Is what I would have said, but he misses the level three. <laughs> he misses the level three, and then Duel Kevin finds the counter poke to actually take the round, steal it away from Ending Walker, and to make this a 1-1 even set scenario. Is what I would have said, but he drops the combo. <laughs> <laughs> spaghetti all around here in this set but dual cabin ends up getting the chip anyways and that is a big drop from ending walker instead of being up 2-0 in the set he's actually down or rather tied one to one that is a world of difference away in a high pressures high stakes tournament match so definitely a big flub there from ending walker but nothing he can't recover from as the set goes on however we see here the set goes to 2-2 dual cabin at set point against Ending Walker. Ending Walker trying to maintain corner control. Goes for the back throw into the, the fourth row throw loop. Drive rush pressure gets denied by the drive reversal on wake up. Drive rush in DI, which has worked many times for Ending Walker, finally is countered appropriately. Dual Kevin ends up eliminating Ending Walker 3 to 2. And I know Ending Walker is regretting that super drop. He just had to complete the super motion and he potentially might have taken the set 3 0. Who knows? That momentum 2 0 up uh, could have carried him hard. Instead, he is eliminated 3-2, and the Evo third-place finisher gets third place at Cream City. So he still has to grind for his Capcom Cup uh, qualification. And now we have Duel Kevin versus Mena RD in the Grand Finals. So how does it go? First set, Mena RD actually starts to lose with the Zangi for the very first time. Uh, Duel Kevin gets the download and forces Mena RD to switch to his Blanca here. Uh, Duel Kevin one round away. From bringing this to a reset. Perfect parry there for Mena RD to get the sweep. Stand fierce to level 2 activation. Challenge from Duel Kevin is denied. Oh, it's level 2 time. It's Blanca time. Shimmy. Duel Kevin doesn't bite. But the Blanca pressure is strong. A little bit more level 2 in the tank. Random DI denied by the parry. Drive rush canceled to keep Duel Kevin in the corner. The meaty lands. One more interaction. Gets a tick throw. What's it going to be? Guess for set here. And... Mena RD goes for the fake drive rush pressure here. You can see the, the idea. He goes in for after this throw, drive rush with jab to halt his momentum right there with light kick. Um, many people would uh, potentially tech the throw in this situation. So what Mena RD does, he, uh, he actually represents this, this mix up a lot. He goes for the forward jump in the corner. If you try to tech a throw there, the jump is going to land and he's going to, you know, net the punish right there. But Duel Kevin does instead wake up Arabian OD Cyclone. The very first time we've seen him do this option, with which beats both a throw. If, if Mena already stayed on the ground and walked up throw, it would beat that. And also beats the jump in in the corner as well. So an amazing option there from Duel Kevin. The first time he represented this against Mena RD in both their sets. And it ends up securing the bracket reset for Duel Kevin. So... We're going to a final set situation between these two players. So Mena RD, who has secured the run back so far against Nephew, secured the run back so far against Just a Kid. His last target, Duel Kevin, the man who eliminated him from the tournament where he could potentially have won $300,000. He wants the revenge here. He wants it now. And how does, how does it go? 
Back to the Zangief. We have Mena RD on set point. Dual Kevin on his last legs here. Dual Kevin finds the ODDP to activate the level two. Mena RD times to defend in the corner. Goes for the parry. The, the fake out. He gets the throw on the parry right there. Mena RD blocking it out. Jumps over the enhanced mixer. That is six frames. He squeezes out a jump to get away from it. Dual Kevin tries to wake up Parry to save his drive here, but now he finds himself in the final interaction. And this time the jump works. He walks into his grill to fake the throw. Dual Kevin tries to tech. The jump in lambs from Mena RD. And we have our second qualifier into Capcom Cup. Mena RD with Zangief as he secures his revenge over his final target in this tournament. And this is a legendary moment for a couple of reasons. So the last time a Zangief player had won a CPT premiere, not an online regional and not like a, an invitational like the Panga League in Japan, which Kobayan won, was Snake Eyes in 2017 at CEO. While this tournament, I would argue, was a bit more stacked than Creep City Convergence, this is the last time an open bracket premiere CPT event was won by Zangief. And this time it's done by Mena RD who becomes the second qualifier into the Capcom Cup for 2024 alongside with Punk, which is very interesting because both of these players are from the U.S. East region. <laughs> I know the players in the U.S. East are extremely happy about this because if we review the points, it's pretty interesting. Mena RD is not even in the top three of qu the qualifiers in the U.S. East region. He was actually struggling in the World Warrior tournaments. They've done, what, uh, three tournaments so far? Yeah, three tournaments. And Mena RD only has uh, 55 points where players like Knuckle Do have 120. So now he doesn't have to worry about the World Warrior program, which we, he was definitely falling behind in um, after three lackluster performances for Mena RD standards. And also Punk as well. Punk and Mena RD are out of the running, which opens up two potential spots. In this region, the number one qualifier overall will auto-qualify into Capcom Cup, which is looking like right now Knuckle Do is the favorite. And then the other top eight players below first place will play in one final mini tournament. And the winner of that gets the second spot to get into the Capcom Cup. So now out of US East, four players will be able to qualify in the Capcom Cup because two of them have already qualified through the open bracket tournaments. And uh, it's very interesting to see, you know, no one from Japan has qualified, no one from Asia, but two players from US East have qualified here, which opens up the door for players like Knuckle Dew, Boost, Idom, Safe, uh, Shine, Kami, Psycho, Flux Waves. Uh, it gives them all a better shot to qualify for Capcom Cup instead. So that's all I have for this video. Let me know what you thought about it. Let me know what you thought about Mena RD's amazing run, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.